problem. There we go. Hey, everybody. Uh, that was really weird. I don't know why I defaulted that way, but hi, everyone, and thank you for uh, here. Uh, gosh. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to another round of Kanji Plays. Uh, I'm your host, Derek, and I'm here to have some fun with you as we go through the mansions of madness and have a good time. I hope everybody had a good weekend. Um, I know, uh, I think a week ago, uh, my um my driver streamers friends all in the eu moved ahead an hour of their time went to daylight savings time uh today i think the u.s and canada and you know this side of the pond we we just went to it today so it's it's a lot of fun i am jumbled and confused today so i'll get through it as i'm adjusting to the new time change all right uh hey Steph, what's going on? Pull up a chair. Hey Cynthia, what's going on? Cynthia is my Gloomhaven digital and painting uh bud, so that's a lot of fun. So welcome, welcome. All right, everybody. We're gonna get into a playthrough of Mansions of Madness. We'll be playing the expansion Streets uh the Streets of Arkham expansion, doing the Gangs of Arkham scenario. So we're gonna have some fun, we're gonna get some information, we're gonna get down to the table. And I will try to stop fumbling. Okay, Matches of Madness 8.0. It's a re-implementation of the first edition, since this is second. Makes sense. Uh, thematic 16 overall, 38. Hey, Steven, what's going on? Pull up a chair. Uh, <clears throat> it's a 1 to 5 player, but best played 3 to 4. I will be playing with three investigators. Um, about 100 to 180 minutes. This, this scenario says it's a smidge longer. So, just a smidge. And um, the community says about... A community says 12 plus can play, it'll be fine. I agree with that. Uh, weight's about 2.68 out of 5. Nikki Valens created this wonderful game, so thank you, Nikki. And a great group of artists put this Cthulian uh, theme to life with their wonderful artwork published by Fantasy Flight Games, now owned by Asmodee. I am still on the hunt for the last two suppressed memories and reoccurring nightmare scenario. I hope with Asmodee doing all these re releases of old content like their. They're re-releasing Arkham Horror. Well, they've already re-released Arkham Horror, the living card game, but they're re-releasing the Dunnett's Legacy Cycle as one full complete set instead of you having to hunt for Mythos packs, which is great. Then, then they did it again with Lord of the Rings, the card game, where they're re-releasing a revised version, and then they're going to start doing that with the cycles releasing full so you're not hunting for Mythos packs. My hope is that they do that with Mansions of Madness. There's not Mythos packs to hunt, per se, but I want to get, I, I'm trying to find suppressed memories and reoccurring nightmares, and they are sold out everywhere, and wherever you can find them online, people are selling them for 600 bucks. So, no. So, that'll be good. All right. Let's get down uh, to business. Let's get down on the table, and let's play, have some fun. So we're going to be playing with the Streets of Arkham scenario that's on here, which is noticed by this symbol. Uh, that lets you know that's where the cards and the expansion is for it. There's some new stuff that comes in here. There are elixirs that are part of the Streets of Arkham. There's a new tower puzzle that's in here. And then there are these improvement tokens. So if you see me play, um, if you see me play Arkham Horror 3rd Edition and you saw the, the cluster that that was, these improvement tokens kind of bar from that, where you can improve your willpower or your influence, and you get those tokens added to your card, and they kind of break down how to use them. So should I run into anything where I can use them, I will pull out this and we'll, we'll talk about it. But the new stacking puzzle that's on here that you have to use, that you have to be able to stack everything properly, that's going to be a new thing on there. And yeah, it's going to be, going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So that's for you all to see as we play. All right, so we're starting off with Gangs of Arkham. As you can see, I have the app up here on the side that I've been running it through. It's about a three difficulty, but as you can see, the duration is a smidge longer. Smidge longer. About 180 to 240 minutes. Damn. I'm probably going to be dead before the 240-minute mark comes up or be successful however we play it. So let's get into it and see what's up. Um, after a violent murder, tensions are rising between the Sheldon and O'Bannon gang. The mutilation caused by the murder is nothing short of unnatural, and you are compelled to investigate. Can you discover the facts behind the murder before all-out war is declared between the gangs? Um, I will be playing with a three new investigators, and I said a three, 
The first one is Finn Edwards. And Finn Edwards' ability says once per round, you may move one space before or after performing a search action. So if I do a search action, I get to, I get free movement before or after. So that's Finn the bootlegger. He's a bootlegger. I've got Maria Lambeau. I almost said Monica for people who watch Marvel. Maria Lambeau. Um, at the start of your turn, you must ca you you may cast a spell without spending an action. So she is all the psychic power and magic of the group. And then we're using Wilson Richards. Wilson Richards, after you resolve a, a horror check, become focused. So he will be coming focused a lot because this game does nothing but say horror check, horror check, horror check. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I'm just I'm just being honest. I might be, I might be. <laughs> Alright. So those are the three investigators that we're gonna be using for this scenario. I've got all the tiles over here that I'll be needing. And on top of that. Um, I am actually, I'm putting together today, or tomorrow, probably today or tomorrow, I'm putting together the Bre the um, Mansions of Madness uh, all stuff storage solution that, that I bought from, um, from uh, Etsy. And I'll be doing kind of like a, a video of that and posting that on the channel as well. So if they're clicking to play stuff that doesn't require glue and time to dry, I'll, you know, You'll see me put it together that way. Otherwise, I'll probably just put it all together and then do a video of me putting everything in. So you can see the all in solution and I'll show you the website and everything like that. Okay, let's get let's get to it. Ain't nothing to it, but to do it. Uh I promise I will not be making those things all. Yeah, eh, we've got both. Okay, and our starting item. Okay. So we're starting off with two guns. I'm okay with that. And a spell. So we've got the 18 Derringer, the 45 automatic. Uh, the Elder Stein Pendant. Okay. Magnifying glass. So if you if you get all of that, say for the suppressed memories and reoccurring nightmares. If you get every other thing, this will be your, this is how thick the deck is for items that you can have in the game, right there. Okay, so we've got the, and we've got the shriveling spell. Shriveling, hate when that happens. All right, so shriveling. Okay, so we know Monica, Marie. <laughs> Monica, <laughs> and you marvel. We know Marie is going to be getting the shriveling spell because she can cast spells without spending an action. So she'll get that one and I'll put these on the side for her to use. So for her shriveling spell, it does three damage and we'll see what happens afterwards, which hopefully won't be too bad against her. Uh, there's the Derringer that does two damage and the 45 automatic that does four damage. Well, we'll give Finn, since he's a bootlegger, the Derringer. And we'll give Wilson, who has a shotgun, the 45 automatic. Then we have the, um, the Elder Sign Pendant, who says, uh, roll one additional die when evading a monster. Well, they've both got eight health, but six um, sanity. She has six health and eight sanity. I think I'm going to give this to the bootlegger. Let's say he's a little su superstitious. And roll one additional die while resolving a test. I'm actually going to give this a uh, observation test. Her observation's terrible, so I will give that to Marie, and we'll we'll see. I'm going to head and put a shot of Jameson in my coffee. You're starting off the morning, right? Okay, so we've got all that stuff, and everyone starts off with a clue. Get a clue. I also have to do my uh, gaming tokens to say who's, whose turn's done what. So let me get everybody their gaming token. And we're ready to dance. Dance, dance. Rio.
The body, if it still could be called that, lays on a sterile steel table. A man in a white coat grips the sheet covering the corpse in his rubber gloves. Brace yourself, warns Eugene Winchester, the town coroner. As he lifts the sheet, you feel the bile rise in your throat. This one came in early this morning, Dr. Winchester says. Police say it was a mob hit, but I cannot believe even gangsters would be so savage. I've seen five bodies in two weeks that are the result of the feud between the O'Banion and the Sheldon gangs, but nothing like this. Whoever, whatever did this, must be more beast than man. It must be stopped. As you head toward Easton and the scene of the murder, you feel unease churning in your bowels. You have a feeling it will remain until your work is done. I gotta tell you, I'm not thrilled with having unease churning in my bowels, but, you know, let's see how it goes. The murder took place in a room at the Carmichael Hotel, the four-story hotel is located in the heart of the East Town District. It is early enough when your taxi cab drops you at the front entrance to the hotel, where a revolving door leads into the lobby. The place the lobby is in the and the walls. Lobby and the walls. Oh, this place. Okay. That's what this game is, a bunch of looking for tiles, looking for tiles. The lobby. And the walls have been as indicated, so we've got wall here and the wall here. You enter the lobby through the revolving door. Oh, it's going to go this way. We're going to start off like that. You enter the lobby through the revolving door. The lobby was once nicely decorated, but a lack of maintenance and care shows in the grimy floor and dirty wallpaper. Play paper. Play paper. The main door to the lobby leads back to the street. Place an explore token is in the. Uh, the door to the right has a sign that says exit above it. Place an explore token. Might have to go outside. Up the stairs is a door leading to some of the hotel rooms. Is it? A man in a rumpled tuxedo with must hair and an unkempt mustache stands at a desk in front of you. Place the person to it. A box sits on a table with a sign reading lost and found. Place a search to it. A luggage trolley could be used to block a door should this need arise. Place a barricade to it. Barricade. You set out to gather clues, interview witnesses, and find suspects in the murder case. Okay, so... Um, ben is going to go first. And Finn is going to move here and go to Lost and Found. And remember, it's a free action that he can move again after he searches. The box is filled with items left behind by the previous guests. Inside uh, it, you find a useful trinket called the Elder Ward Common Item. So he gets another kind of Elder Ward. It says, roll one additional die while a monster is attacking you. Uh, 
So that was his search action and his ability says once per round you may move one space before or after performing a search action. So it was the move for free, search, and now he has one other action, which will be he's gonna go back here. I could have talked to the guy, moved and then searched, which is probably what I'm gonna do. I'll say I did that. I talked to the guy. Move then, sir. So, good day. The hotel manager greets you with a smile that you you can tell is forced. How many ideas of assistance? Sure. We are here to investigate the last night's murder. I see. Are you with the police department? Yes. Our influence check. His influence is a four. <laughs> so we're already dice rolling. Alright. Why, well, yes. Yes, we are. Two successes. One, two. Of course, officers. Here's the key to the victim's room number 202. Gain the brass key, unique item. Oh, unique. Unique. If there's anything I can do to assist in your investigation, please let me know. Now he's done. Because first action, talk to the guy. Second action, move and search. Okay. Um, then it is... I want to check out this, this side alley. We should check out the room, too. So Finn might go check out the room. Wilson's going to go to the side alley. Uh, maybe. Something's up. Let's go to the side alley. Explore. Okay. Here. Door opens onto a dark alleyway. Discard the explore token and place alley 2. Corner, street corner, street corner, alley corner, oh, like, like street corner, alley end. Are you serious? Street two, alley two. Okay. The alley opens onto a street corner. Place a light. A nondescript door leads into the building across the alley from the hotel. You can see on the door the outline of a small slot at eye, le at eye level, allowing someone inside to look out. Place an explore token is indicated. A man in dirty clothes and suspenders is loudly banging on the door. I told you we ain't open yet, a voice hollers from the inside. The man outside gives up his banging, pulls out a cigarette, and lights it up. He spots you through a puff of smoke. Looky what we have here, the man says, the cigarette bouncing on his lips. He saunters in your direction. You look, you look like you're looking for a good time. I bet a finely dressed individual like yourself can afford a good time, or at least can afford to not have a very bad time. He reaches in a pocket, pulls out a pistol, and brandishes it at you menacingly. Hand over your valuables. Spawn the hired gun. As indicated. Oh uh, my sir. You are looking for trouble. Uh you dang Tosa. I'm going over here. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a chat. With my 45 automatic in your face. My first action. Second action. You want to play? Let's play. Uh, firearm. I need to make a dex, so four. <laughs> so one, and I'll spend one to make it two, which is successful. If you pass, 
Your marksmanship overcomes your un uh, cooperative limbs. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage, which is four. One, two, three, and That ends my turn. Uh, next turn is going to be Marie. Marie is going to move. And Marie is going to cast the shriveling spell on him. <laughs> Woo! Wee! Attack! Uh, spell! You begin the incantation as if by instinct, your lips forming the words uh, of their own accord. Even as you give voice to the eldritch sounds, you struggle to understand their meaning. Lore. Her lore is four. Uh, one and two. If you pass, the hidden truth presents itself, and you find that you are able to command them to, to lash out at your enemy. The monster suffers damage equal to the spell's damage, which is three. Boop. Denver. Mm -hmm. mm. Tried the wrong one. And then I flip this over. As you lower your hand, you see a putrid sore on your palm. Suffer one face down damage. Then discard this card and gain a new one. You mess with the wrong one. At the start of your turn, you may cast the spell without spending an action, which I did. Right. One face down damage. Card this. Grab a new privilege. Okay, so uh, that was her first action and her free action. Her second action is going to. Oh, sight lines, sight lines. Alley 2. The, uh, the alley opens onto a street corner. An investigator in Alley 2 may reveal. Yep. Okay, so this is coming back. A lot going on. Street corner. Street corner 1. Circular window on this door looks like, looks into a diner. Place an explore token in the cave. A modest sign for the Arkham Gazette, Arkham's second largest newspaper, adorns the wall above a door. The loud sound of heavy machinery carries through the wall. Uh, the street turns. Okay, so her second action is going to be, uh, let's move up and open stuff up. I'm going to come here. So we're playing Street 1 and Street 2. 2. Okay. Here. And we can look like that's a door. Is that a door? Yeah. Uh, the cobblestone street stretches off in the distance. Place the street one, street two, door, and discard all sight. Uh, a diner on the corner has a large pane glass window looking out on the street, and a regularly shaped pink neon sign on the roof reads Belma's in a cursive script. That's Belma's diner. Cool, cool, cool. 
Uh, a sign hangs above the door uh, to a curio shop. On the sign is the image of a skeletal cat's head. Its jaw parted as if, as if it is going to hiss at you. Uh, this door to a small chapel has a large wooden cross hung above it. Lots of stuff to do. An odd glow coming from a small spot on the cobblestone street catches your eye. More. More to the street. Okay. All right. This is. I'm gonna have to shift this around a lot. All right. That ends her turn. We're done. With some good exploring. You're suddenly blinded by a flash of headlights. Your ears filled with the blaring sound of a horn. This mythos event affects the investigator in a street with the lowest influence. Uh, that would be Marie. Marie. That would be Marie. She has the highest influence, but she's the only one in the street. This one's in an alley. Oh. With a roar, an uh, automobile careens pass. Make a deck. Her agility is four. Uh, one, two. Success. If you pass, you nimbly step aside. All right. Then you got the key. Head to it. So uh, one and search, and you're going to open up this door. Yep. Uh, a hallway stretches out before you with Two numbered doors on the side. This here. here. The door is number 201. It has a brass doorknob and a keyhole. You think you can hear someone moving around inside. This is 201, so that's two. Okay. It has a brass doorknob and a keyhole. Yep. Yep. Try to move it. That is his turn. Move and do a thing. Um. Hmm. One, two, and let's open up Belvin. Go on through. Oh my gosh. Okay, I have to pull all the stuff down <laughs> because that is a big tile. Okay. The diner's typical greasy spoon with a large with a long counter and several boots with leather seats. There are only a few customers this evening. Place the diner. Uh tile indicated. Yes. This is the biggest tile ever. <laughs> biggest tile ever. It should get everything in the shot for you all. Right. And the vault. Where's doors, doors, doors? Uh, you might find something of use in the kitchen. In the back of the booth, a man in a suit and a fedora sits alone facing the front door. His face seems to be uh, 
perpetually in shadow, regardless of the angle from which you view it. Hands folded on the table in front of him are clad in gloves as red as blood. Oh my gosh, if he's not guilty. A waitress in a grease-stained apron is busy clearing a table near the door. Uh, yeah, we're going in. Okay, so that was one, two to open. You are going to move. Now let's go into, let's pop open. We're splitting the party pretty much. Um, the first one, pop this door to the set. Uh, so the printing press is, is a deafening cacophony of machine noises. The cramped room is dominated by a massive machine, a hodgepodge of gears and rollers spinning hundreds of feet of paper through a confusing maze of twists and turns at dizzying speeds. The smell of Inca sultry nostrils with such power that you can almost taste it. Oh. Yeah, the expansions are good. There's... This is like a, that's the biggest tile I've ever seen here. Those, uh, print. So this. And place here. Young star. Uh, a figure is bent over a table in the corner of the press. Uh, turn to you. He does not seem to notice your entrance. This person took his indicator. A number of back issues of newspapers um, litter the press room floor. Place a search token. And that was my first action to go there. So my second action will be to After rifling through the old newspapers, one particular headline jogs a memory. The banner headline for two weeks ago reads, Gang shootout leaves several dead. The large picture accompanying the headline shows a black-haired woman dressed in a fancy evening gown and large hat kneeling down next to a body covered in a sheet. A look of anguish on her face. The caption identifies the woman as Detective Alice Luxley. Hey, what's up, Jason? Pull up a chair, man. Pull up a chair. I hope you're having a nice Sunday. It's too bad we all lost an hour of sun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, skimming the first few paragraphs, you note the shootout was between members of the Sheldon and Obanian gang. Several gang members were killed, along with one innocent bystander, Lulu Haverford. The article mentions that Detective Luxley had also been caught in the crossfire, but survived unharmed. Gain a clue token. And remove so I think I know what's happening. I've already got a theory. I've already got a theory. That crossfire thing, the innocent bystander probably belonged to one of the people who ran the cultists and they were kind of saddened by it, so they summoned and they're causing problems. So we're we're splitting up and we're doing we're figuring stuff out as we go instead of sticking together. Alright, that's all our turn. I got I got a plan. I got an idea already. <laughs> Uh, a single beam of light breaks through the clouds, but it is quickly choked out. No immediate effect. Okay, so um, let's get to this room first. So we're going to go here, then we're going to use the key. Uh, unlock the door. The door is number two, and it has a brass doorknob and keyhole. The wood flooring just outside the room is stained red. The investigator with a brass key unique item can unlock the door. The door unlocks with a click. Glancing around to see if anyone is watching, you turn the knob and open it. To guard the uh, the, the floor of the room is stained with red blood, but otherwise uh, everything else seems oddly in place. However, the murder went down. It seemed the victim put up a little struggle. That's what I was looking for. The victim's coat rests on the bed. He must have taken it off before he was attacked. Place the search token indicated. This was why I sent him to the room. 
A suitcase lies open on a wood table against the far wall. Its contents might tell you something useful about the victim. Please search there for me. And yes, we may move into the So it was one, and then one to do that. Once per round, you may move one space before or after. Okay, so I gotta wait till next round. To do that. So you're, you're done. These turns go so quick. Okay, um... That gentleman bothers me. He really does. I, I want to go check him out. But before I do, because that might end up being something horrible, I'm actually going to uh, go here and talk to the young lad. Young sir. Young sir. Uh, ben Marlowe is bent over a table in the corner of the uh, press room. Back turned to you. He does not seem to notice your entrance. Try to talk to Ben. You tried yelling a greeting over the noise of the printing press, but Ben does not react at all. You walk closer and try shouting again, and again <laughs> get no reaction. Finally, you reach out to tap Ben on the shoulder. With your finger over it only inches away, Ben suddenly turns and looks at you. He is a young man in his late teens or early 20s. He makes what looks like a quick wave. Uh, what do you know about last night's murder? What is down that nearby? What do you know about last night's murder? Ben shakes his head and points to his ear. You try asking again more loudly. Ben shakes his head again, points to himself, and then taps an index finger to his jaw near his ear, and again near to his chin. Uh, find something to write your question. Uh, find something to write. Right. You look around for something to write on, and you find a pen and pad of paper on the table. You pick up both and jot down your question, then hand it to Ben. Ben smiles appreciatively at you before reading uh, what you Communicating through message, messages written on the pad and pen, Ben tells you that he was just leaving the diner down the street last night when he saw a dark figure jump out of the second story window of the hotel room where the victim was killed. Ben could not make out much about the figure beyond its long blonde hair, okay, but he wrote that it appeared not quite human. It disappeared around the corner through the flea market, gained the missing link I'm telling you, it's the cop. Uh, listen. The cop is all behind. The police! Additionally, Ben tells you that one of the Gazette's reporters had taken photographs of the crime scene and police activity this morning. He hands you a small stack of photos. Gain the photographic evidence unique item. The investigator holding this can inspect the evidence to see what's going on. Okay. So I gotta wait till... Round Gotta wait till next round to look at it. Boop. Uh, one. Dude. In the back booth, a man in a suit and a fedora sits alone facing the front door. His face seems to be perpetually in shadow regardless of the angle with, from which you view it. His hands folded on the table in front of him are clad in gloves as red as blood. Sit down across from him. What's up? You sit down in the booth across from the red glove man. Silently, he takes a piece of paper out of his breast pocket and slides it across the table to you. You pick up the paper and look it over. It appears to be a kind of contract offering to make you. Everything you could hope to become. In return, you promise to provide your services at the time of reckoning. The man holds a pen out. <laughs> this is on the level, right? This is on the level. This must be this must be on the level. So he doesn't know me and yeah. No. Nah cheap. Nah. You think better of signing the contract and push it back towards the man. It seems legit. He silently picks it up and returns it to his breast pocket. You get up from the booth and leave the man to wait for another opportunity. That seemed legit, right? <laughs> that was a move and talk. I'm done. You hear a oh really? You hear a screeching sound like claws on wood coming from somewhere nearby. Suddenly, a dark shape emerges. So a hunting horror has come to horribly hunt. Right here. 
The hunting car moves three spaces toward the investigator within range with the highest health and it attacks. Yes, it does. The creature swoops forward and slashes at you. Dex. She is. She has four. One, two, three. Three. So, negated. Each investigator must resolve a horror check against the monster within range with the highest horror rating. Yep, this is gonna happen. The thing writhes as if in agony, its jaw opening further and further until its mouth cracks and the creature tears in half, revealing a slimy, squirming new monster within. Suffer three horror, willpower, which is three plus one, which is four. Uh, if you suffer two or more horror, the display churns your stomach and drops you to your knees. Become stunned. Oh, yeah. One, uh, one, two. So, oh, and a clue, and a clue. Three, three. Haha. <laughs> no damage. No damage. Awesome. No damage. Okay, they're getting right to it. They are getting right to it. All right. Uh, let's go with let's go with him over here first. Uh, let's check this first action. The victim's coat rests on the bed. He must have taken it off before the attack. You decide to search the victim's coat pockets for anything that might be of help. Um, we are testing observation, which is four. Uh, one, and I'll spend one for two. Lifting the coat, you notice it feels heavier than expected. You locate the source of the extra weight in the right side pocket. And reach in. Gain the 38 revolver. Uh, this one does three damage instead of two. It's a firearm. In the same pocket as the gun, you find the victim's driver's license. It identifies him as Marlon Dietz, a resident of Boston, Mass. It lists him as six foot two inches and 220 pounds. A big man. It would take a very strong assailant to kill such a man without a struggle, or perhaps he was taken by surprise. Not satisfied with your initial findings, you check the rest of the coat pockets. You find a small pocket hidden on the inside left breast pocket. Inside you find a gold pocket watch. Gain the uh, pocket watch common item. It says you may perform one additional puzzle step when attempting a puzzle as the pocket watch. Okay. First action, second action. Search, and then I'll move out of the room. A suitcase lies open on a wood table against the far wall. Its contents might tell you something. Search. You dig through the victim's suitcase, looking for any clues about who this person was and why they were killed. Amongst the clothes, you find a journal with a worn leather cover bound with string. Gain the old journal unique item and one clue. Old. And you can read it in the app. In old journal. Is that a... Yeah, it's an action. Well done, and I'll do my free movement from that to move out of the room. And that will end his turn. Um, well, she needs to deal with this monster, so she's going to be spell casting like you wouldn't believe. So let's, let's do the thing. Attack with the shriveling spell. Uh, willpower. So at the start of your turn, you may cast a spell without spending an action. Dang it. Nope. Uh, if you fail, you lose control of the energy and it dissipates into the air around you. Uh, then flip. The spell seems to resonate and echo within your mind. You direct the resonance at another foe. Suffer one face-down horror. 
Then another monster within range suffers three damage. That will... Oh, I gotta shuffle it. That will work. So I could have killed him. So he takes three. Dang it, I could have killed him in one go. In my free action, too, if I'd have just made that check. Oh! The worst. The worst. Okay, so... Let's see what's going on here. Suffer one face down horror. Then discard this and get another. Well, guess what's happening next? Attack for my... So my free action was to cast a spell. My first action is to cast a spell again. This is with lore of four. Alien words and symbols uh, flash through your mind. You try to make sense of them. One, two, got it. Uh, roll two extra die if you have suffered three or more horror. If you pass, you decipher the arcane meaning and dark energy pours out from your hands. The monster suffers damage equal to your test result. Um, test result? Boo. One, two. Uh, if you fail, you glean no further meaning, then flip the spell. The spell works exactly as you expect, aside from all the blood. No additional effect. Discard this. I'm going to have to use all my turns to kill this thing. Okay. And I got to do it for my final time. Well, actually, I shouldn't have done that. I probably would have done... Uh... No, my strength is stupid. Um, so willpower, which is three... Uh, one, and I wish I had a clue, so no. Uh, if you fail, you fall backwards away from the Portland land once again before the beast. Well, you feel, if, you, you feel for a moment as if the strange boils and lesions have taken hold within your brain. Suffer one face down horror. Guard this and get the next one. <laughs> Three times and I can't kill this thing. It would have been the spell's damage. Oh, it sucks. Oh well. That's how the dice rolls. Alright. Um one two one two. Let's deal with it. I usually would split them up, but three times and I can't kill this thing. And I guess I don't think it would have mattered. She's still going to get hit no matter what. Do I want to do that? I don't think I want to. I'll do one, two, one, two. Should reveal this. No way. All right, so the streets turn a corner and the dead end at a warehouse. Uh, or the street corner. Street corner two. All a door leads into a warehouse. This door to a small chapel. And more sight. Okay, that ends that for him. He's gonna get hit no matter what, so let's just deal with it. Darkness descends on Arkham as night falls. Your investigation has taken several hours and twilight has passed three turns. Uh, into night. You notice a number of dolled up flappers and dapper fellows disappearing down an alley at the end of the street. The silence is suddenly broken. This mythos affects the investigator in an outdoor space with the lowest. There's only one person. So it's all. A strange and worrisome sound trills from nearby. Lore to lore. All I roll is two dice for lore, so. Uh, if you fail, the sound is unknowable and seems to come from all around you. Suffer two face down horror and become restrained. I wish I had a clue. <laughs> I have no clue. 
Okay, so um yeah, two face down horror. And become restrained. Those are strange due to me. It's like that not good enough feel. You cannot move voluntarily. That's what restraint. Well, at least I get to do two actions of open door. Uh, yeah, you're gonna attack. The creature swoops down. Dex negates, so it's attacking her. Her dex is four. Uh, that's two. So you're gonna take one damage. Thirst for justice. Resolve immediately. Become righteous. Then flip this card face down. Righteous? Righteous. I have no clue. <laughs> righteous. Once per round, you may convert. Ooh. When you suffer one or more horde, discard this card. That's This is a new card for, um, for Streets of Arkham. This is the card that I needed. Once per, turn, once per round, you may convert all magnifying glasses to successes. When you suffer one or more horror, discard this card. Okay. Uh, each investigator must resolve a horror check. And flip fantastic, because I might lose it already. Uh, if you suffer three face down horror, the creature's keening cry rises all around you. Suffer it so. Righteous might be gone just to start, but I might be able to use it now. Willpower. If you suffer one or more horror, it seems to be haunting. It's, it seems the haunting must become physical things binding you to the ground, become restrained. Uh, I'm going to use it before I lose it, so that is two of the three, so I'm going to suffer one face down horror. I'm then going to lose the card. And I become restrained, so I can't move. I don't plan on it. Because I'm probably going to have to spend all three actions to fight you. Free spell, please. Has silly creature in my way. Lore. Four. With your fear comes a glimmer of familiarity. You could swear that in some other time and place, you learn such creatures. You rack your brain for a hint uh, at it may yet contain. Damn it! If you fail, the magic you uh, conjure fades. This is this is that was my free cast. Your enemy flesh ripples and peels open. The monster suffers one additional damage, then suffer one face down horror. But at least I kill it. So I get one face down horror. Then discard this card. Grab a new one. <laughs> ah. All right, the horrible creature falls to the ground and remains motionless. As you watch, the creature's corpse changes its features transforming before your eyes. You are struck with shock as you slowly begin to recognize the being's new shape, the body of a dog, a large border collie to be exact. That is when you notice the collar around its neck stretching and fraying from the transformation engraved on the silver tag attached to the collar is the word Daisy and an address. Name the circumstantial evidence unique item. It says, <laughs> I'm not having good luck with spells at all. You do realize you should just be start playing now. Where's the hour long preamble? <laughs> I am not, I, I don't do the hour long preamble. <laughs> I just get into it. <laughs> all right, so we got that. Oh, that was my second action. Kill this stupid thing. My third act, well, my first action was to, my free action was to cast a spell. My second action was to kill it, finally. And my third action, or was that my first? That was my free spell. So I have two actions left. That was my free spell. I have two actions left. Okay, so that was my free spell. I have two actions left. My first, let's look at the missing link images. 
examine the photos. The photos show that the victim appeared to have been mauled to death as if by an animal. One particular photo stands out to you. It shows a bloody footprint on the floor outside of the pool of the victim's blood. The footprint appears to have been made by a person moving through the pool of blood towards the window, and its shape appears to be that of a woman, a woman's heeled boot in clue. Sarah, can I look more? You've gleaned all you can from Lisa. All right, so that's my first action. My second action, let's, let's have a chat with him again. Uh, he touches a hand to his chin and moves it in your direction. A look of gratitude on it. Okay, so my second action is... Um, where's my thing to say what I can do? Come on, come on, give it, give it. I can trade, interact, explore, search. I wanted to see if it was like third edition or I could focus, but nope. Uh, nothing else for me to do. Got a whole lot of nothing. Waste the turn. Uh, okay, so. Grant goes away. You're done. Um, you're restrained as well, so let's just do our search. Wait. Ben holds the pad of paper and pen out to his mouth to write down what is down the alley nearby. Communicating through uh, messages written on the pad of, uh, pad of paper, Ben tells you that the alley leads to a speakeasy called the Rough and Tumble that is run by the notorious Sheldon Gang, Arkham's largest supplier of bootleg hooch. Hooch! Okay, so that ends her turn. Uh, your turn. You are going to search this. You're restrained, you can't do anything. You find a small glass vial. The glow comes from a bit of luminescent liquid inside. The vial has the image of a cat's skull on the outside, which you recognize from the sign outside the curio shop. In the forensic evidence, unique item and a clue. Okay, then I'm gonna pop open this door. I can't move into the room, but let's open it up. This is curious shop. Uh, the shop is filled with trinkets, baubles, and doodads. Doodad a word? <laughs> of all sorts. Many of which you cannot readily identify. A shelf on one wall is lined with small glass vials filled with liquids in a rainbow of colors. Discard the explorer truck and place the curiosity shop. Here we Uh, there is an assortment of blades of various uh, <coughs> size and purposes in a case on the wall to the shop. Place the razor common item. Why is there a straight razor in here? You may suffer one face down damage to convert all to... Uh, there is... Sitting on a shelf on one wall is a framed photograph of a young woman. The frame is draped with black cloth and arranged around the bottom of the picture are candles and flowers. As you enter, you're approached by a somber woman dressed in black, her heeled boots clicking on the hardwood floor of the shop. She wears a long brimmed cart wheel hat over long blonde hair. Guilty! Jacuse! She welcomes you to her store and says to let her know if you need help. Finding anything. Place the person token is indicated. This is Beatrice Haverford. Stops for pride. I can't. I can't move. I'm restrained. So that's his two. And then we lose restraint. That's our guilty suspect. I'm going to go in there and be like, I have proof. You did it. I've got pictures. I've got pictures and I've got farm animals. So next up will be Finn. Finn is going to move one. And let's uh let's check out this door. 
sixth floor. You find the door to the room unlocked. It swings open, revealing a small hotel room with a bed and a few sparse uh, furnishings. One token. There is a lady. A maid is turning down the room. The room is not ready yet, she tells you curtly. Come back later, please. Okay. Uh, yep, I'll do that. And then I will speak with the maid. What can you tell me about the man who died last night? I did not see anything, she says. She is clearly upset, and you feel like she is holding out on you. After a bit of prodding, she continues. I did talk to the man who died yesterday. He asked me to go to his room for a belt of liquor. He told me he was a bootlegger, and that he could get me all the booze I wanted. I told him I did not want to break the law. He insisted and tried to grab me, so I slapped him. Please do not tell my boss. I could lose my job. The maid, vanish, uh, the maid finishes making up the room and heads off to the next one with her cart in tow. Okay. So that was two actions. All righty. So the dogs are changing. People are weird. And she's the guilty party. She did it. She did it. But somehow we got to, I just have to accuse her of it. She's our guilty party. I know why she did it. The door to the press room opens and in walks a woman in long, in a long brown jacket and what appears to be men's boots. She wears the six-pointed star of a detective on her chest and a felt mushroom hat on her head. Her long jet black hair is pulled back in a ponytail. Place a person token, so this is Alice. Alice Lux. Wilson Richards starts to feel lightheaded and ill. Uh, test observation, which is three. Uh, if he passes, nope. If he fails, the faint, the, the faint sweet smell of gas grows stronger, leaving Wilson Richards with a persistent headache and nausea. Suffers two face down damage and becomes mesmerized. Will Wilson be able to do anything? I mesmerized, says. Um, at the end of your turn, an alien will take control of you. Flip this card. Oh, no. All right, so I have to shuffle those. Give him one. I have not been having any good luck. This is just awful. Okay, so he is mesmerized. At the end of his turn, something bad's going to happen, which means he's going to go last. So uh, let's talk with the cop. What is it? The detective asks uh, brusquely. What can you tell me about the last night's murder? Influence her opinion of you. Influence her opinion of you, which is a free act. What is it? The... Uh, the in... Yeah, I'm not going to insult. Alright, influence. I roll five dice. All blanks. You ready? All blanks. All blanks. Uh, three. Let's pick another three. You strike up a conversation with the detective to try to get on her good side. She seems more affable by the time you finish. Okay, cool. Now let's talk. I like your boots. <laughs> what can you tell me about last night's murder? Uh, it appears to have been a gang-related killing. The deceased has ties to the Sheldon gang. He was an out-of-town hooch runner for the Boston... Uh... That's it. That's all I can do. Uh... Okay. So let's get you moving. One, two, one, two. You're done. Here we go. In you go. 
and with what can I help Beatrice ask only investigator with the forensic evidence can ask about the MC empty file. That's him. That's Wilson. What can you tell me about this empty vial? This is a vial from one of the elixirs I sell, Beatrice says. I'm not sure what kind of elixir it would uh, it would have contained. You asked if she knows who might have bought it. I'm afraid I do not uh, give out such information to my customers. Sus. You might be able to figure out uh, who bought the vial in the shop's ledger, which is laying on the counter by the register. Sauce. All right, so that ends his turn. Let's see what happens. These things go on as I close my eyes. Uh, these things are so heavy. Uh, they are weighing you down. You must get rid of them immediately. Suffer one face down horror unless you drop an item, then discard this card. You can't keep taking those, so I'll drop an item and discard. I'll pick it back up in a few. Okay, so I think that's it. Yep, that's it. Detective Luxley turns and walks away, her dark black ponytail swinging behind her as she disappears from sight around the corner. Remove her. Or Creatures fill the air, wispy and floating aimlessly. This mythos affects each investigator in the curiosity shop. Evolve? Trying to catch them in is tempting, but the capricious wisps evade capture. Test willpower three. One, two, pass. If you pass, the tiny beings fade from existence. Uh, after you resolve a horror check. There's no horror check. Okay. All righty. Uh, let's open this bad boy up. So, um, one. A nondescript door leads into a building across the alley of the hotel. You can see on the door the outlines of a small slit at eye of one. Knock, knock. The slat in the door slides open and a pair of eyes peer out at you. Uh, password, a gruff uh, voice demands. You do not know the password, so your only hope is to try to convince the doorman to let you inside. Um, this is influence. Your influence is four. Three. Sweet. One, two, three. Eh, all right, I'll let you in this once, the doorman replies. The slats slide shut and the door unlocks. The door swings open, revealing a packed speakeasy. Numerous people are crowded into a small room laughing and drinking bootleg liquor. The sound of jazz music from, uh, from a phonograph uh, push out mechanical noise coming from the building next door, and the smell of cigarette smoke fills the air. Scarred this. And we are... Going into the speaking. At the back of the speakeasy is a booth surrounded by a burly man. Between the bodyguards, uh, you catch sight of an older man seated in the booth. Like the person took as indicated, this is old Sadie Shelton, leader of the gang. An older woman you recognize as Sadie, wait, what? An old woman you recognize as Sadie Sheldon, old Sadie's daughter and heiress apparent, stands near the bar chatting with a young flapper in a beaded dress. Perhaps they are discussing something relevant to your investigation. Person took it. Let me a man stands next to a coat rack putting on a long coat. He appears to be preparing to leave. You notice he is carrying a handgun in the shoulder holster. So, uh, Papa.
This is a gangster. Yep, we're going in. That was one, two, right? So it was one, two. Wait, it's here. One, two, one, two, one. Open the door. Yep. That ends your turn. Okay. Time to go. One, two. One, two. That is you. Uh, circumstantial evidence? I'll be back. Nope. Nope. You have the photographs. He had the old journal. We'll look at the old journal in a second. Um, first action is to pick back up the gun. Second action is to look at the picture on the wall. Sitting on, the sh sitting on a shelf on one wall is a framed photo of a young woman. The frame is draped with black cloth and arranged around the bottom of the picture are candles and flowers. As you inspect the photo of the woman more closely, Beatrice comes alongside. That's my sister, Lulu, the, shop the shopkeeper says. The resemblance between the two women is noticeable, uh, particularly as both have long blonde hair. You offer condolences and ask what happened. She was savagely murdered two weeks ago. She was just coming home from the theater with her friend. Is she Martha Wayne? Uh, with her friend Alice when, she villainous, when some villainous monsters started shooting at each other and my sister was caught in the middle. Alice should have protected Lulu. Should have recognized those villains when they approached. I will never forgive Alice Luxley for living while my sister died. In one clue in the scar to search there. Okay, that was two. Here we go. Mythos event, once again, <laughs> resolved the event for Wilson. A bell in the curious shop uh, door tinkle, tinkles, tinkles as Detective Luxley enters the shop. She fixes her eyes on you, but before she can, she says, uh, before she can say anything, Beatrice has a sort of feet. Miss Luxley, I thought I told you that you are not welcome in my shop anymore, Beatrice says uh, icily. Detective Luxley looks pained by her words. The two women make quite a contrast in appearance. Beatrice is dressed in a gleaming silk dress while the detective wears a drab brown uniform. Beatrice's long, wavy blonde hair flows freely around her soldiers and back while Luxley's straight black hair is pulled back into a tight ponytail. I'm here on official business, Beatrice, Luxley responds, clearly fighting to keep her emotions in check. I will not speak to you, Beatrice retorts. If the police department wishes to speak to me, they had better send someone else. I don't know what to do here, so you all are going to decide with a poll. <laughs> so I'm putting up a poll, and you're going to tell me what I'm going to do. So, uh, what should I do? And I will either uh, enter a detective. Detective Luxley. Or Beatrice Haverford. Or not or uh listen. Silent. Alright, I'm putting up the poll now. You will tell me what to do. Pick Pick what I should do. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm putting up the poll. You're gonna tell you get to select what's gonna happen. And I'm gonna take a drink of water. Just, wow. So, should I intervene on behalf of the detective, intervene on behalf of Beatrice, or remain silent? So, you select that. The poll should have gone up, hopefully. So, you select which one you want me to do. And I'll give it a, I'll give it a couple minutes, and then we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. What I think of, and let me kind of talk through my, my, my mental process here. The detective wasn't, I mean, Beatrice is blaming her because she's grieving. 
the detective was just walking was just there walking home either with the sister which sounds like they had a thing going on so maybe it was with the sister and um they were just caught in the crossfire kind of you know punisher style so it's not her fault but if she's here on police business maybe we should intervene on the detective side However, whatever's going on between them, it just seems kind of really odd. So you, you're, you're really not sure, right? Beatrice is grieving. She's angry at the detective for not protecting Alice. The detective is here on police business, and you can tell that it's hurting her because it's like she seems pained. Um, kind of saying what she needs to say, trying to keep her emotions in check. So she's just here on police business to see what's going on. Maybe she's looking to see what happened. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. Oh, man. I, I really don't know. Uh, let me look at the polls. Y'all are killing me. You can't pick all three. <laughs> Somebody's got to bring this tie, because I don't know. I'll roll a die, if anything. <laughs> all right. I'll give it just like a couple more seconds. It looks like it's a it, it's a it's a tie. Three people voted, so it's thirty three percent for everything. Um, I don't know. All right, I'll end the poll. <laughs> yeah, it's I I don't know. So I will. I usually have my hybrid die around here. So, oh, I cleaned up yesterday, so I moved. Okay, so that's just awful. <laughs> um, all right, this will have to be it. So, Detective Luxley will be the magnifying glass, which there's actually how many elder signs are on here? One, two, three. There are three elder signs. One, two, magnifying glass. One, two, three, um, blank. So let's say I'm feeling more inclined to, yeah, I'm feeling more inclined to listen, but let's say, yeah, I guess I will do that. <laughs> let's just, let's just listen. Let's do it. Remain silent. The two women exchange a few more heated words before Detective Leslie finally gives up and leaves the shop. I feel it was a missed opportunity. Uh, the gangster leaves the speakeasy, walks hurriedly down the alley, and turns the corner of the street. Oh, where are you going, buddy? Where are you going in such a hurry? These, uh, these halls, these, this furniture, and these paintings are all so familiar to you. The mythos event affects the investigator with the highest influence, which would be uh, Marie. I keep calling her Monica forever. Uh, you become convinced that you are the rightful owner of this house, robbed of your inheritance. The rage fills you until you cannot <laughs> contain it and thrash wildly at the walls. Suffer three damage. If you suffer no damage, you lash out at your friends. What the heck? These, these halls, this furniture, and these paintings are so familiar. It just... Okay, that's so weird. That seems broken. Anyway, three. Uh, my strength is three. Uh, one. Two. So I take one damage. Take one damage. Broken leg. Yes. If you move more than a single space as part of your action, flip one damage face up. Yay, I've got a broken leg. Not thrilled about it. Okay. All right. You're going to go first and move your one move there. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. He is ridiculously limited. I shouldn't have moved in there at all. I was just trying to catch him off off guard, but um, let's go to him. Let's check the let's check the journal. As you flip through the pages of the book, a card falls out into the ground. When you pick it up inspect it, you see it as a business card for the Rough and Tumble, the speakeasy located just down the street. Scribbled on the back is a series of letters that appear to be completely random. You suspect it might be some kind of code that, if cracked, will provide you with a password. I'm already inside. This doesn't matter, but sure. I'll give it a shot with three turns. This, this really doesn't matter. Wow. One. Two! <laughs> Look at that! Hey! <laughs> Problem solved. Uh, you've cracked the code and discovered the password, the duck tree. Now to put it to use. There is also more that can be learned from the journal. An investigator with the old journal can spend an action to read more. <laughs> really? Alright, let's read more. The book is filled with dates and quantities of deliveries, but deliveries of what? You're not sure. Flipping to the last page, you find a date and location. Tonight in the old warehouse, just down the street from the hotel, uh, where the victim was killed, gain a clue. Is there more in there? All right, cool. So, cool. So that was him. He's done. All right. I know she was the one that's getting revenge for her sister's death. Going after the detective really means nothing. So, one, two, and open up the church. We're just opening up right now. This building houses a quaint chapel with a few rows of pews and a modest altar. The space is lit only by candlelight from sconces placed at regular intervals along the walls. Place the chapel token and the wall token. A kindly looking man in, in his 50s is busy arranging items on the altar. He wears a troubled, weary expression. Please. Priest, Father Paul. Uh, we can barricade the doors. Uh, an emergency light source rests in an alcove near the front. Christina Lantern. And yes, I will. Okay, so that was one, two, one. I just need the evidence to prove that she did it. That's it. Uh, Marie moved one. Yep, we're all done. Because her movement is now terrible. That's a terrible card to give somebody who doesn't move far. Turns and walks away, her dark ponytail swinging back behind her as she disappears from sight around the corner. Remove her from the board. Uh, the gangster continues at his brisk pace down the street. Turns around the corner past the chapel. As indicated, this mythos uh, effects in the curiosity shop. Nobody's there. No effect. Beatrice Haverford flips the open sign on the curio shop front door to close side, locks the door, and turns off the lights at the shop. Then discard the curiosity shop and all cards and tokens on it. So she's about to do a thing. 
She about to be shady. Okay. Our turn. Um. I could really get hurt in this job. Um. He has a broken leg. I'm just gonna flip one damage face up. I can't. I can't live like this. Um. <laughs> One, two, flip one of these face up. Thirst for justice, become righteous, then flip this card face down. Righteous, righteous. Then um, she's going to move one to reveal that. Good. All right. Uh, the flea market is mostly deserted this hour. Guard the sight token. Yeah. Something lying on the ground by one stall uh, catches your interest. Fire extinguisher common item. That might come in handy. Hey, William, how's it going? You're always welcome. Always welcome. Uh, a middle-aged woman in the process of closing up her shop for the night. This person. Uh, this is Mira Radovic. Stall. A burly man in shirt sleeves stands in front of Mira's stall. He holds a crowbar in one hand. Sure is a nice stall you got there. You overhear the man saying, would be shame if something were to happen to it. Please, Mr. Mirror, please. I cannot afford paying you more. I cannot be feeding my family. What? I cannot be feeding my family already? What? Let's intervene. You step forward and tell the man to leave the stall owner alone. Move two spaces towards uh, Mirror Radovic. This doesn't concern you, the man says, brandishing his crowbar at you. Now scram. When you stand your ground, the man shrugs his shoulders and turns away from you. One. You think he's leaving when he suddenly whips around and swings the crowbar at you. Suffer two damage. Uh, spawn the hired gun. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Dex, my dex is four. Uh, that's one, two. So for two damage, dex negates. I got two. I'm good. Spawn a hired gun. You missed. You missed. I can't punch you the way I want. Um. Because first one was to move. Uh, one, two. Which made me flip one of those to become righteous. Actually, it was three success. The next one was to move one and see here and to get close. Um, oh, I can cast a spell. I can cast a spell as my action. So, attack with a spell. I can do that for free. Uh, lore, roll four dice. You trace a mystical sigil in the air, letting your mind expand into it. If you pass, the curse burst. Four. I got one, two, and because of righteous, that's three. Uh, if you pass, the curse burst fourth. Um, the monster suffers damage equal to the spell's damage. Okay, one, two, three. Flip it. As you lower your hand, you see a putrid sore suffer one face down damage. Only horror will get rid of it. Guard this and get a new spell. Okay, that ends my turn. So I've got four damage of six. <laughs> All right, so now you're done. 
Um, I can move. Hmm. This apple has to be something. There's got to be something going on here. I'm not going to grab the kerosene lantern. Let me... Uh, where's this guy going? He's He has to be going to the warehouse for the deal. So I can go through there. She closed the shop, which means something's going down. One, two, open up this. So not ready yet. Could have done one, two. I could have shot the guy before he hit her with range. Wait, what's range? Range could be, uh, maybe I could shoot him from here. He's three tiles away. Let's see what range. Uh, the range of effects that use phrases within range is up to three spaces away. So, firearm. Let's see if firearm hits three spaces away. That's how I would shoot that fool in the back. Uh, firearm. Range. Because with firearms, you can shoot at range, I believe. Range cannot be counted through walls or doors unless an effect specific range can be counted through impassable uh, can be counted through impassable object. Guns are ranged weapons. I can't find it in the rules. Does anyone know? Can I um What's the the gun is a ranged weapon? I, so can I, is it within range? Like, what's the verbiage for the weapon? I want to play it right here. Because it's not really saying in the book. I think it's within three spaces away, which is one, two, three. But I don't know. I don't know. I need the pros on this. I probably got to go to the internet first. So. Uh, let's see here. I need the pros on this one. Mansions of Madness. Range weapons. Ranged combat. Thank you. Thank you, BGG. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull this up so we can view it together. Of course you would be there. Um, oh, hi. Okay, so range, range combat. With range not to be counted through doors, I might not be able to shoot in the next room even if the monster is directly in space. Not if the space with it is within range. Not if the space isn't within three spaces without counting through a door or a wall. So I can shoot. I want the verbiage for range. Hmm. What else we got? Question about range. Mansion of the Man in the second edition. So a hunting horror attacks the nearest investigator within why? Why? No, leave me alone. Within range, my guy's around the corner through a door, but only two squares away. See, this is around the corner. Range, there we go. Range is up to three spaces away without any doors, walls, or barricades. Okay. That's what I cared about. So, one, two, three. I'm a shooter. <laughs> so he's getting shot with my 45 automatic firearm. Uh, observation. My observation is a three. Uh, one, two. There we go. If you pass, you catch an opponent sneaking up on you. The monster suffers one damage. Suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage, which is four. Is 
Thanks to you for saving me, Maria says, standing up from behind her stall where she had taken cover. I do not know what I have done without your help. These Sheldons are stealing my money for some time. Perhaps next time they'll think twice. Become righteous. Righteous. I guess. He is righteous. Awesome. -o. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> okay, so that ends your turn. Your turn. Um we need to do some we need to do some padding. You didn't end up in a really bad place, but you need to get the work. Um let's talk with I'm going straight to the boss, the head honcho. I'm going straight to the head honcho. Old Sadie's surrounded by several large, angry-looking men. It would be difficult to get a word with him. Try to talk past the goon. Influence of four. Whoa! Look at that! The goon step aside and you make your way to Sadie, who has been watching the whole display. All right, you got my attention, Sadie says. What do you want? Uh, I think you may have known the man who was murdered at the Carmichael Hotel last night. Mr. Sheldon, I've heard a great deal about you, but no one mentioned how attractive you are. What do you know about last night's murder? He says, I think you may have known the man who was murdered at the Carmichael Hotel last night. As you tell Sadie what you know, he remains stoic. Yeah, I knew the fella. Sadie says when you finish. We were working to get toward a business arrangement. Somebody must have gotten wind of that and put an end to it. This has the stink of the Obanian gang all over it. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. Block war! Gain a clue. Okay, so that ends this turn. Let's get to, we'll talk to the lady next round. So that was two. One to move, one to get there. And the warehouse has got to pop open. She's the one that's doing it. The gangster walks up to the door to the warehouse, unlocks it, goes inside, leaving the door slightly ajar, removing the board. In the distance, you hear sudden screams and howls of rage. The sound is gone as soon as it begins. This mythos affects the investigator with the lowest wisdom in the space with the most investigators. Okay, uh, three, three, four, between these two. Um... Uh, I think I'll make it Marie. Your vision, uh, tints red. He's gonna roll two dice. Suffer two horror. In your fear, you lash out at your companions. For each horror you suffer, each investigator takes two. So, she's only rolling two dice instead of three. And she is righteous. So, she's gonna use her righteous to negate all of it. No horror. One success. And one of those. We're good. No one cares. No one cares about what you want to do to me. Okay, so. Um, open it up. Peek through the door. And we are dealing with... Uh, the warehouse is dark except for light from a lantern at the far end of the room. In the dim light of the lantern, you see the warehouse is filled with wooden crates and pallets. Many crates bear stamps from exotic, faraway locales. Discard the explore token and place the warehouse. Okay. You're not missing much. Uh, there he is. There he is. You see the gangster who had been hurrying through the street, standing at the back of the warehouse, talking to another person who is holding a lantern that is only a source of light. Okay. You try to listen in the gangster's conversation, but you can't hear what they are saying from where you are. You can try to get closer to overhear him. Um, try to get closer. So, dex. Your dex is four. Two. That's two. 
You sneak through the door unnoticed and take cover behind some crates. Within earshot of the two men, move one space towards. Okay, what do I hear? That's a damn shame, the man with the lantern says. Who done it? The boss ain't sure, says the man in the coat. He suspects the Obanians heard we were bringing in a new supplier and bumped them off. In any case, the meat is off. Well, well, I guess we better... Did you hear that? Your blood runs cold as you fear they may have heard you. The men, the men both look in their direction towards the rear door of the warehouse. The door suddenly bursts open and a hideous creature appears in the dim glow of the lantern held by the gangsters. Place the hunting horror. He's back! You have only a split second to react to the sudden arrival of the terrifying creature. <laughs> what to do? What to do? All right, this time I'm gonna let you all decide once again. And let's not <laughs> let's let's see what you want me to do. So uh, what to do? Uh, warn gangsters. You want me to warn the gangsters? Do you want me to uh, remain hidden? Or uh, run for it? So uh, ask your community. Community, the poll is coming up. There it is. So what do you want me to do? Warn the gangsters, remain hit in the run for it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> she has four of He's okay. Here are. So she's the only one hurt. Okay. And that can go. Ah. See what happens. Uh Okay. Okay. Uh oh. What happened there? Well, I could fix that. I know. I know why that cut off. One second. While you all vote, let me fix that problem. This is ridiculously cold outside. Room heats up. Right, it'll come back on in one second. Okay, let's go ahead and finish. End poll. So we've got a 50 50 split of Warn the Gangsters or um, Remain Hidden. I myself would remain hidden. I'm going to remain hidden. You remain hidden behind the crates, uh, petrified from fear before even the gangster can pull out their weapon. The monstrosity is on them. One of them is struck by an appendage and sent flying across the warehouse as the beast sets upon the other. The lantern falls to the floor and the massive jaws of the creature descends on the gangster just as the light goes out. Place darkness. A scream from the gangster is suddenly cut short by a loud crunch. Place the snub nose revolver common item in the gangster's face. At least it's not 33%. I know, right? I know, I know, I know. Uh, snub nose. I don't care about that gun. Not my... I get it. Uh, snub nose revolver. Here. 
then discard the gangster. He's dead. Okay. So that was my first action. My second action. Bye. <laughs> One, two. <laughs> Mount. Okay. Uh, actually, if I get the kerosene lantern, I can be in there, but it doesn't matter. I'm out. We saw what we needed to see. I know she's the one that's doing this work. We just have to prove it. So that ends his turn. Uh, your turn. We're going to chat with her. Uh, what do you know about last night's murder? Do you have anything useful for sale? Do you teach me a spell? Teach me a spell. I can teach you to unlock the powers of your mind, Mira says. You accept her offer and she begins to chant in a language you do not understand. As she continues, you feel a sensation in your mind, like a fog being lifted from a long-forgotten memory. Slowly, you begin to understand Mira's words, not because she has changed the languages, but because you now understand it. Gain the Force Language spell. Okay. Force learning, not force language. Force learning spell. Uh, possibly. Uh, it may. It may have get. Uh, that, that may have definitely been a thing. Okay, so we gain that. That was one. Two. Um, do you have anything useful for sale? Perhaps this is interesting. To you. She gives you in the candle common. We got a light source. Yeah. That ends my turn. All right. Will this guy still talk to me now that I know a little bit more? Or do I need to go talk to his daughter? Never mind. All right. So one, let's talk to his daughter. An older woman you recognize as Sadie Shelton. Uh, old Sadie's daughter and heiress of parents stands near the bar chatting with a young flapper in a beaded dress. Perhaps they're discussing something relevant. Try to eavesdrop. So we're doing observation. My observation is a four. Uh, one, two, and three. I am tired of this coffin varnish, the flapper says. When are we going to get some quality stuff? Pop says it should be soon, Sadie answers. He was supposed to meet with the supplier from Boston last night, but that noisy female detective was spotted stalking out the guy's hotel. Freddy's going to meet with the guy tonight, and we should get some real liquor in here as early as next week. Hot dog, the flapper says. Cannot happen soon enough. Sadie glances your direction and notices you're listening in. Hey, he says to you, taking an aggressive posture. Private conversation. Beat it. You decide, uh, you decide starting a fight with the gang leader in a place packed with her underlings. Might not be the best idea, so you retreat into the crowd. Gain a clue. So I lost a clue to gain a clue. And discard the person. Alright, I mean, all it is now is just waiting to see what happens next. We know who did it. I, I just don't know how to trigger it. So that ends your turn. And we're done. So we need whatever happened to happen. <laughs> Unbidden, the terrible things you have seen rise up from your memory uh, where they were safely locked away. Each investigator flips two horror face up. One, minor shock. No effect. Two, flashback. Flip one other horror face up, then discard this card. Minor shock. <laughs> so this is... And then flip that face down. You get of them. So you already got a broken leg. What else are you going to lose? Are you going to be able to walk at all this round? Okay, so first one. Kleptomania. Keep face up. Whenever you end your turn in a space with another investigator, take one item at random from another investigator in your space, and sudden shock. Drop two random items, then flip this card face down. So that's this, this, uh, these are in my bag. That'd be these two. It says drop two random items, both of them. Boop, gone. And then flip this card face. Awesome. 
Hey, you have nothing. You're good. Uh, the hunting horror moves three spaces towards the investigator within range uh, with the highest influence. Three spaces. Wow. One, two, three. And then attack. Leaping into the air, the horror lands heavily upon you with teeth and claws flashing. Suffer two damage. Strength minus one negate. So I'm rolling four dice. Because I have my strength is five. Uh, how much do I need to beat? Yes, I'm going to use my, my Righteous to change that to a success. So it says it suffers two. I negate all of it. Each investigator must resolve a horror check against the mob, which is what I needed for Wilson. Okay, so uh, within range, right? So you and you have to deal with it. The creature makes a strange whistling noise that pierces through a din of flapping wings and whipping tail. Uh, we need to pass willpower, so he gets three, and he will become focused finally. Wow, that wow. If you fail, you're deafened for a moment, and through the silence, you hear the distant sounds of voices suffer too horror and become dazed. Can't do anything about that. Become dazed. Wow. He's going to become focused and dazed. You cannot spend clues to convert dice results. But he becomes focused because of his ability. Um, then let's deal with you. Uh, willpower. You only roll three dice. What the bleep? <laughs> oh. Um, two horror. Awesome. Oh, you didn't suffer your two horror. That's two. Uh, suffers two horror. Your first horror is minor shock, sudden shock. Drop, drop, ran, drop two random items and flip this face down. Awesome. Just fabulous. Um, then she failed, so she'll get two. Minor shock and fervor. Become righteous, then flip this card face down. How much do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of eight. So I get my righteous back, but I am also dazed. Okay. Thanks for that horrible thing that just happened. Okay, so... Let's deal with our problem, shall we? Um, she's gonna go first. Nothing really to pick. Uh, she's going to. She's gonna cast her spell first to get the free one. Cast a spell on the creature. Spell, lore, lore. He is righteous. Come on. Come on. Got it. Um, roll two extra die if you've suffered three or more damage, which I have, so that should have been two more extra dice. Beautiful. And uh, she will convert that to a positive. If you pass, uh, if you pass, Eldritch Energy erupts from your hands, killed by your own life force. The monster suffered damage equal to your spell's damage plus your test result. That's three plus three, that's six. And flip this card. The spell works exactly as you expect, aside from all the blood. No additional effect. Card. Draw another. That was my free spell. Um, she is going to cast the spell again. Willpower. Got it. As the arcane words reach your lips, you find yourself alone standing before a swirling black portal. You try to work up the courage to pass through it. If you pass, you howl and charge through the portal and find yourself back where you stood. 
The howl cell issuing from your throat is black energy arcs to the creature before you. The monster suffers damage equal to the spell's damage plus the test result, which is three and three, which is six. Burn. The creature shrieks in pain from your attack. Unable to withstand any more injury, it spreads its wings and leaps into the sky. You can only watch as it flies away. You have fought off. You've fought it off for now, but you suspect it will be back. And then I need to flip this card. Yeah, I'll deal with that in a second. Um, oh, this is the one. Uh, this is the one that would have. So I suffer one face down horror. Let me see if it's enough to drive me crazy. One, two, three, four, five. Six, so one more. And this thing says if you suffer one or more horror, I'm no longer righteous. Um and I suffer face down horror. That's seven. <laughs> one more and I go crazy. Two, four, six, seven. Okay, and then I get a new shriveling spell. Okay, uh what does it say? The sound of the police siren in the distance catches your attention. If the police find you with the bodies of the two gangsters, you will have a lot of explaining to do, and you doubt the police will be willing to listen to what you have to say. Typical. You decide you had better make haste back home before they arrive. You have only until the end of the investigation phase to finish what you're doing before you must head home to avoid the police. Okay, so that was her that was her that was her her next one is to pick up her stuff. So that's her, that's her action. First free spell, second fire a shot, third pick up her stuff. She's done. Uh, first, he's going to pick up his weapon. Second, he's going to move one, two. Um, his turn, he's going to get out of here. One, two. Uh, we're going to go back to the hotel. Do we want to go back to the hotel? We're gonna go back to the hotel. And that will end our turn. You flee the scene before the police arrive. Clear the board. What? Okay. The next day, you decide to question some members of the Obanian gang about their possible involvement in the murders in East Town. You talk to your contacts and learn that members of the Obanian gang like to hang out at the Wolf's Den a swanky club in downtown Arkham. Also located downtown is the, is the address on the dog collar you collected yesterday. Yay. Like, we've done everything we could here. <laughs> here are the board. Oh, this stuff up. Okay. Okay. You decide to wait until evening to rest up from your late night and increase your chances of finding someone at the lounge. Each investigator may flip one damage face down or discard one face down damage. I don't want a broken leg. Uh, discard one damage. We'll discard this. And you're okay. All right. Stuff up. Okay. You arrive downtown at the at the bandstand in Independence Square at dusk. You can just make out the shape of Founders Rock to the east. To the south is a small pond populated by a collection of ducks. Place the bandstand and park. Pond tiles as indicated. Uh, park pond. Band. There's so many tiles everywhere. Come on, give it. And yard, bandstand. Uh, the lights are.
Your group meets up near the bandstand, place investigators. Uh, an older gentleman is out for a stroll, whistling a tune as he walks. When he, he hits a high note, you think you can hear the sound of a wolf howling in the distance. Yikes. <laughs> a young girl plays on the bandstand, plays person touch. Um, a dark haired woman sits on a small folding chair reading a book that is glowing with a soft greenish yellow light. The light from a park uh, in the light from a park lamp you can read a handwritten sign on the front of the page. Fortunes told ten cents place a person which is indicated. This is Anna Kozla. Oh. Uh, an older woman sits on the bench by the pond, place a person which is indicated. Uh, a younger woman is feeding ducks by the pond. Place a person token was indicated. The park is bordered on two sides by the street. Place a site token was indicated. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, there's another one else placed. Um, this one is here. Well, let's take a gander. To be a free look. Uh, street runs along the edge of Independence Square. An investigator in the bandstand or a park may reveal it. Let's see. Uh, a busy street runs the length of the park. Discard this site token and place Street 1 and Street 2. Street 1, 2. Street turns a corner and continues around the park. Uh, here we go. Uh, a boy of about 10 stands on the street corner selling newspapers. You can hear his calls with last night's main headlines. Extra, extra, read all about it. Another two men murdered last night. Police suspect gang activity. Police person took it. Indicated this is the news. A door leads into a shop with a creative uh, name of General Store. A sign in the front window reads, out of, out of business. Yet you notice the newsies opening the store's door for the occasional passerby. Huh, suspect. Um, above the sign, Spellbound. You know where Marie's going. Okay, then what about this? A street runs alongside the edge of Independence Area. An investigator in the bandstand uh, may reveal this, which we all are. So we've got a busy street runs through the length of the park. Places street corner and street one as indicated. Street corner one. So it's the street corner one and street corner. Are you sure? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Street corner. Okay, so we've got. together here and here and we've got we've got we've got we've got this is here and that again
this door. Okay. Good. Let's go all right, so a grimly alley winds its way uh, away from the park side street. Uh, a door leads into a multi-story building. Lettered on the door are the words Humphrey Court Apartment. Above the door is a street number matching the address on the dog collar. Okay. Okay. More stuff. An empty, unkempt lot that's follow uh, awaiting development. I think we've revealed all we can reveal <laughs> before we get started. Oh my gosh. Good morning, Tara. Good morning. All right, so let's see. Um, we're going to have Finn deal with that. So one, two, then let's deal with the pet. A door leads into a multi-story building. Lettered on the door appears to be Humphrey Court Apartment. Floor. Uh, oh, you don't fall off the table. Okay, so a long hallway stretches out before you. It has numbered doors uh, at intervals down each side. Discard the explore token and do the entry hall and wall is in it. Okay, let's see how I can get this on the screen. I think I gotta flip this thing sideways. Or else you won't be able to see anything. So turn, 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 turn. Pull, pull, pull. There we go. Okay, so we're doing the entryway. Nope, oh, we're doing the entryway. And wall. Well, We've got this door is numbered 101. 101, which is the apartment number of the dog collar uh, you collected yesterday. We've got a clue a set of mailboxes is mounted on this wall. The mailboxes are labeled with the names of the re residents of the buildings, though they do not have apartment numbers on them. We've got um, door numbered 102. And we've got uh, this door to the left is labeled exit. Yep, we're going in. Okay, that'll be his turn. He's done. Um, next up, next up, next up. You're going to the curio shop, one, two, and let's open that door. Or the spellbound. I want spells! Floor. Uh, the, the bookshop is filled with rare books and hard-to-find tomes on magic, alchemy, witchcraft, and the supernatural. So this is the magic shop. Magic. This. Huh? And we've got six on the wall. Okay. There is yon lady in the window. Uh, this shop is attended by a middle-aged woman with spectacles. This is uh, Gene Watson, bookshop. There can be a barricade in here if needed. And we're going in. That ends my turn. And then Wilson. Wilson, Wilson, Wilson. There are people in the park. Lots and lots and lots of people in the park. But let's talk with this lady who's next to us with the fortune. A dark-haired woman sits at a small folding table reading a book that is glowing with a soft greenish-yellow light. In the light from a park lamp, you can read Fortune. But can you tell me where I could find the wolf's den? Uh, I would like you to tell me my fortune. Tell me my fortune, and then we'll ask about the wolf's den. Certainly, Anna says, closing her book. She takes out a deck of tarot cards. 
I sense that you are occupied with an important task. I believe I can help. She lays out eight cards on the table in front of you. Arrange these cards however you please. You feel a strange compulsion to place the cards in a particular order. Uh, this is lore, which... Two! Two! That's all I got. Oh, and we would lose days from the last one. But he is focused. So, two! <laughs> uh... So the how the beads are kind of aligned is what I care about. Where's the other part of that skull? Okay, the bottle. Everything is spun. So there is a bottle with a skull that goes above. So that goes above the skull. That's the top. No, it's where it should be. Okay, so one. I see I see some of the pattern, right? So it's like on all the way to the right, you just have to flip them. Um the The bottom left, the two, one goes above the other. But I'm trying to find the end. See, I know. I can't see the left side. Oh, it's not. It's not the left side. Okay. One. Two. His first action. And his second action. One. Two. Wow, I screwed that up. <laughs> I screwed that all the way up. <laughs> so <laughs> don't yell at me for screwing that up. I, I screwed that picture right up. That ends my turn. Uh, a low song just beyond the edge of hearing wafts through the air. The mythos event affects the investigator who has the most items, which would be Finn. Your palms become clammy and your pulse races. A wave of powerful, ruinous greed runs through you. Test willpower. Uh, one success, please. Uh, if you pass, you master yourself uh, until the fling, uh, healing passes. All right. So he's going to go to the door. We'll worry about that fortune in a second. There's number 101, which is the apartment number on the uh, dog collar you collected yesterday. Try knocking. You decide to, the polite thing to do would be to knock. So you give the door a few raps. After several moments of silence, you decide no one's home. Try going inside. You try the knob and are surprised to find it unlocked. You slowly open the door. A crack and look inside, seeing no one in the apartment. You open the door all the way to get a better look around. The apartment is nicely furnished, uh, with worn but well maintained furniture. The place is quite tidy and lovingly decorated. The bed is made, and uh, and most of the apartment is neatly organized. Better pay attention. The picture cuts off the end. Pay attention to the next. Yeah, I need to. <laughs> Uh, there is two. On the floor near the door, you find two wide metal dishes. Well, I get to do some free stuff. Uh, desk nearby is a large volume of some kind 
laying open on it. On the floor next to the table is a face-down picture frame surrounded by bits of broken glass. Something going on up here. Uh, near the bed is a small table. Its surface filled with glass bottles and vials. The disorganization of this table stands out to you from the rest of the apartment. Okay. Good. Great. A search of the apartment would not be complete without a look under the bed. And I can move in. All right. So my first, so my my search action. So I'm going to move and search. You flip up the bed sheet out of the way and take a peek under the bed. There you find a pair of women's steel boots covered in blood. Gain the incriminating evidence. He's got like all everything that's going on. Okay. That's the end of his turn. That was the move and search free. After opening the door, um, she is going to have a conversation with the lady next door. How can I help you? Only the investigator with the forensic evidence unique item can ask about the file. Um, I don't have forensic evidence. Who does? Wilson does. Can you tell me where I can find the wolf's den? Can you teach me a spell? It would be my pleasure. Uh, Jean teaches you a new spell. Gain the poison mist spell. Poison. Is it the last one? It's <laughs> game. <laughs> Alright. I just need to look at the bottom from now on. So Poison Mist, you can attack a monster in an adjacent space with this card. It's a, it's a melee attack, but it does three. So I've got Poison Mist. So I've got the Shriveling for range and Poison Mist for close up. Cool. Okay. Um, that's our first action. Let's head to the park. One, two, we'll do the fortune while you take care of that. So um, you're going to do, so I'll end your turn. I got to switch places with you. One, two, one. I'll end. The wall of the room seems to close, and this mythos affects the investigator within range of the fewest, within, wait, what? The walls of the room seem to close in. This mythos event affects the investigator within range of the fewest space. Oh, it's either this or this. Um, he isn't hurt. Let's do it. You're forced to crouch and, and shuffle. Suffer one horror. Willpower negates, then become stunned. Uh, success, I'm fine, but I'm stunned. Stunned, stunned, stunned. Not stressed, not restrained, not focused. But stunned. You cannot perform more than one single action during your turn to start at the end of the Okay. So she is going to move one, and let's get back to this test. Okay, and this is lore. Her lore is four. Okay, pay attention to the next. One, two, three, four. That is her action. She had to move to get to the lady. But she'll do... I know what to do now. I know how to solve it. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. <laughs> her rules as good as I do. Um, so that's her turn. Um, you, first thing you're going to do is check this thing out. Oh. Um, glass containers of various sizes and shapes fill a small table near the foot of the bed. 
Some of the containers are empty except for small amounts of residue at the bottom, while others have various measures of unnaturally colored liquid. Several of the smaller bottles bear the logo you recognize from the front of the curio shop. Some of these bottles appear to be unopened. Take a you take, uh, you look for an unopened elixir, take it, name one elixir. So, elixirs are the new thing we got. Here they are right here. And they do random things. So we're going to shuffle these up and take one. It says at the start of your turn, you may improve one skill of your choice if you do flip this card. Uh, flip this card. And we probably will. So we get an elixir. There. And then I'm going to do my move and probably get a lot of elixirs, but we'll do that. We'll just get one and then we'll look at the dish. One of the dishes is empty and the other has a bit of water inside. The empty dish is, in, is engraved with the word daisy. Near the dish lays an old sock that appears to have been chewed on. Aw, daisy's dish. In quote. Okay, that ends you. Uh, your turn. Let's talk to the lady about the vial. But what can you tell me about this empty vial? Ah, an elixir vial. The logo is that of Beatrice Haverford Shop in Easton. Uh, though I also sell these elixirs here in my shop, if you're interested. If you ask Jean if she could identify the elixir that was contained in the vial, and she says she will try. You end the vial with Jean, who pulls out the rubber stopper and runs it around her nose briefly before quickly recoiling. Ugh, that's overpowering. This is a very strong brew. I am not sure exactly what it is, but my copy of Alchemy Through the Ages might have an answer. Just a moment. She returns the stopper to the vial and hands it back to you before disappearing behind the curtain in the back of the shop. Jean has gone several minutes before returning. My apologies, but it appears that my book has, been, has gone missing. Either I have inadvertently cast a disappearing spell on it, or someone has taken it. I'm afraid I cannot tell you what, with certainty what kind of elixir is in the vial, but I can tell you it was very strong and probably evil in its purpose. Yeah. Okay, so that's his first action. I would like to purchase an elixir, please. Uh, certainly. So we get another elixir. I need to get to the wolves then. I'm, I'm, I'm messing around, but I want to... That way. That ends his turn, and we're done. I'll solve the fortune next round. Whisper, uh, whispers' voices drift through the air. Finn Edward glances around anxiously, looking for where the sounds are coming from. While distracted, he walks face first into a wall, suffers one face down damage. Just like that. Okay. Alright, so let's solve this thing. Yep. Okay, so I had it in my head what I was doing, and now it's gone. <laughs> it's completely gone. Um, one, two. Three. Shoot. I shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have done that. Four. I gotta spin it around. <laughs> then my second action uh, will be one, two. What? What did I miss? The bottle! Oh, the bottle! Three, four. My answer turned. The freaking bottle! I had it backwards! Ugh! Okay, so he's gonna search. This one, he's going to ask where the den is. Um, a desk nearby has a large volume of stuff kind of laying around on it. Open next to the table, picture frame, let's do it. The large tome of alchemy through the ages. The tome lays open to the page titled Milk of Shubnagurul. Uh, an elixir whose purpose is described as bringing out the monster within. Gain the conclusive evidence of each item. You pick up the broken picture frame on the floor. The frame is empty, but lying below it on the floor is a photo of two women. One of the women you recognize is Detective Luxley, through, though she is wearing a formal dress, and she is wearing her, her, her black hair down. 
With her is a blonde woman who looks vaguely familiar. Tag with Luxley and the other women appear to be posing together as if for a family portrait. The photo has been torn in half down the middle so that the two women are on separate halves. On the back is written Alice and Lulu, one year. Gain one clue. Start the search token. Syndicate. That's all I could do because I'm stunned. I could only perform a single action. But that search action allows me to move. So I'm going to move. And I'm done with him. All right. Let's find out where this place is and get, get going. We're, we're fooling around. Where's the Wolves Den? The Wolves Den, Gene uh, repeats with surprise. Yes, it is down the alley at the end of the street. I recommend against going there. The Obanians do not greet strangers kindly. And they are not to be trifled. All right. So one, two. That ends this. So close. And it, uh, a senseless chatter rises, filling not just the air, but Marie Lambeau's mind. Marie suffers two horror. Will par plus, will pl 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 plus one the gates. So rolling three dice. Uh... Can I do anything about that? No. So she is going crazy. She has officially gone nuts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. She is officially gone insane. There's a lot of insane cards that's come with all these, so you've got lots of fun times to go crazy. So we're going to shuffle these up. Pick what's happened. Oh boy. Okay. This is so, so insane. Okay. He goes crazy. Sanity. All right. Return. Okay. Um. Uh, let's see if we can figure this out for my screw up. One, two, three, four. Uh. Ah, yes, Anna says, you're seeking someone. The cards tell me about this person. I see loss, hate, revenge, and deception. Your clues may be misleading you. Not all is as it seems. Despite the vagueness of Anna's words, you feel that the hand of fate is guiding you towards the answers you seek. Gain one clue and become righteous. Okay, so, um, it says that there is loss which means that the detective lost Alice because they were together. Hate, she hates the gangs for doing stuff. Revenge, she um, is drinking elixirs and changing because this is where they live. And uh, deception, she's going around being a cop. It's the detective. Boom! I've solved the case! I've solved it! That was my first action. Um, my second action is going to be to move. Um, one, two. Let me see if I got sight lines on. Uh, a grimy uh, alleyway winds its way from the park side corner investigator in street corner. So, nope, not there. Okay. Uh, that will end her turn. It's the detective. So, let's go on in. A door leads into a shop with a creative name of General Store. A sign in the front window reads out of business, yet you notice the newsy opening the store's door for occasional passersby. Uh, try to go in the door. As you approach the door, you feel the newsy's eyes watching. When you try to hand, uh, when you try to hand to the door and find it locked, the newsy calls out to you, Hey, what do you think you're doing? Uh, the scene of the store is open. Can't you read, the newsy asks. The sign says out of business. Now scram. All right, kid. Up punching the face. Uh, what do you want? Can you tell me where I could find the wolf's den? The boy's eyes narrow and he looks you over. Never heard of it, he says. Now buy a paper or clear out. 
That was a waste of turn. Okay, um, I bet you, and I, this is, this is, I, I know what's happening! One, <laughs> two, actually, um, one, two, I know exactly what's happening. And one, third. I can solve the case! I can solve the case! Uh, this abandoned lot is overgrown with grass and weeds. An assortment of tin cans and sticks indicate children may play it using this the yard too. Yard. Okay. Uh, a wood crate with the words Arkham Construction Company stenciled on the side in the yard. Uh, also stencil inside danger. I know what I I know what's going on. I can solve the case. I just don't know how. I need to get in here or find out what's going on over here. Um, but that was his, as it was one two one. Uh, he looked two. But... Two men in shirt sleeves approach the newsy, who greets them cordially. Can I interest you, gents, in a paper? The boy asks. Without a word, the men each grab one of the boy's arms. Hey, what's the big deal? The newsy says as he struggles to get free. Let me go! The two men holding the boy begin to drag him into the direction of a dozen men who have rounded the street corner near the bookshop. At the head of the pack is a familiar figure, old lady Shell. Looks like it's time. Suddenly realizing what has happened, the boy cries out, The Sylvanian! The Sheldons are coming! The Sheldons are coming. Struggling against his captors, the newsy reaches into his pocket and pulls out a switchblade, but one of the men holding his arm rips it away from him and tosses it aside. Uh-oh. Just as the people in the park watching all of this with confusion begin to realize the danger they're in, one of the Sheldons' men pulls out a shotgun and fires a blast into the sky. Nobody move! The man with the uh, shotgun shouts, stay where you are, and no one gets hurt. The situation is threatening to, to turn into an all-out gang war. You must convince old Sadie Sheldon that you know who killed his, his people before it's too late. I know who did it. I know who did it. I know who did it. <laughs> I know who did it. All right, who can get him? Um, one, two. I know who killed your your people. Make it quick. I have a score to settle. I know who killed your people. Alice Luxley. And who would that be? Alice Luxley. Are you sure? Yes. The detective, old Sadie says in disbelief, that's not possible. I had a I had a tail on her last night. She was nowhere near the warehouse when my men were killed there. I think you were trying to throw me off the trail. You're in league with the Obanians. It seems there is more going on than meets the eye. And you wonder what clues you might have overlooked that would have helped you realize the detective. Dang it! So then it's the sister! Ah! As Sheldon is speaking, Naomi O'Banion strides around the alley corner onto the street, accompanied by a dozen men uh, toting machine guns. Place a person token is indicated. This is Naomi O'Banion. Oh no! <laughs> As lieutenants! Re release the boy or suffer the consequences, old man, Naomi shouts at old Sadie. You've already killed three of my people. O'Banion, Shel O'Banion, Sheldon yells back. From that, you must suffer consequences. Old Sadie pulls out a handgun and points it at the newsie's head. Uh-oh. The air is filled with the deadly cacophony of gunfire as both sides unleash hell, drowning out the terrified screams of the bystanders cowering in the park. Some are gangsters fall to the, uh, the opening salvo, but there are still two dozen well-armed combatants unloading on each other. Discard one old Sadie Sheldon and the newsie. Spawn a riot is indicated. This is the Sheldon gang. Holy yikes. No, I accused the wrong person. Then it's the sister. It's the sister. It's the sister. Oh man, block war. <laughs> oh no.
Uh, discard Naomi, spawn a riot. Oh, I need to break this up. It's the sister then. Come on, we can talk about this. We can talk about this. Why don't we have one riot card? Warlock. Skeleton. Higher gun, higher gun. Skeleton. Warlock. Form. Thrall, 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 thrall. That was the only one I have. I pulled all of these. Oh, here it is. Got it. Found it. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um with the shout with the shooting started, your options are limited. To end the shootout, you must vanquish one of the gangs or call the police and wait for their arrival. A nearby phone booth could be used to call the police. Place an interact token as indicated. An investigator interacts with the phone booth. Oh boy. In the meantime, innocent lives are at risk. An investigator can interact with the person token to get the bystanders to safety and discard the token. Ah! Okay, okay, okay. Um, 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 um. I had one other turn to go. Um, he thinks I'm already in league with them. Uh, it's not the red one. It's not the red one. Where are my red tokens? Be able to say that you are the prey. Come on. Come on. You are the red gang. I know that's purple. That's okay. 45! I need to get out of here. Evade. Uh, resolve an evade check. The right grabs at you as you try to escape. Uh, Dex 4. I'm trying to get the heck out of here. Uh, two. I made it. If you pass, you slip free from their grasp. I mo I'm, my movement was here. Get to her. Cool. We're not fighting these gangs. Your turn. One. Get this guy out of here. Get this person to safety. With some encouragement, you convince this person to run the safety to discard this person's token. Okay. Uh, you're going to do your free move to do your search action. Search. Uh, you pry open the top of the crate and find it filled with construction tools. One of them stands out potentially. Gain dynamite. Dynamite. Oh, no. Hey, Derek, how many expansions do you have, and what should be the first expansion that you should recommend somebody would just come to the core? Um, so I have everything except for Suppress Memories. Uh, Jason, I have everything except Suppress Memories and Reoccurring Nightmares. I have everything else. Um, I would say get the core game. You're saying, like, after you play the core game and you play all scenarios, what to do next? It really doesn't matter. That's the cool thing about this game. It could be any of them. The ones that, so far, the one I really enjoyed is Horrific Journeys. Uh, that one has, you have a flight on a dirigible, which is a blimp, like the, 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 the Zeppelin, you, not Zeppelin, the blimp. But you get the, you get the fight on the dirigible, you get the fight on a crew, on a ship, on an ocean liner, so, and the train. So you get to do those different things. So it's a huge change of scenery. Horrific Journeys does that. Path of the Serpent is more jungle-based. You're kind of in the woods. Um, Sanctum of Twilight is you're fighting against the, a... a uh, and my last, last week's playthrough was of that. And Beyond the Thresholds, more in a mansion dealing with more stuff. So there is a lot of replayability. I think there's Streets of Arkham deals with the gang. So if you're asking which one should you pick up, I think that just... It, with this game, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it, it doesn't matter which one you pick up. It'll just... Um, it, it just works, right? So I don't have a recommendation. It all depends on what you like. If you like different scenes like trains, um, blimps, and ships, get Horrific Journeys. If you like more jungly feels, get Path of the Serpent. 
Um, if you want to deal with Heavy Cultists, Sanctum of Twilight, and Beyond the Thresholds, more of kind of like the Mansions feel. There's another expansion that I'm not naming, which is... And then this is the gang stuff of Streets of Arkham and stuff that you can deal with. So I don't have a recommendation for which one you should try. I say try them all only because each story is so different and so beautiful and changes up each way that roll the dice and see what you get. All of them are great. So I don't have a preference. Um, so yeah, my recommendation is all of them. <laughs> uh, equipment. You light the fuse and toss a grenade. Flip this card over and place it in the space within range. So that was my one. And then one, two. Let's go back and help. And that ends. Monica's done. You're done. And you just... Okay. The Shelling Gang moves two spaces towards the other gang, then it attacks each investigator that shared a space with it during this movement. None. One, two. No investigator in that space. The Abandoned Gang moves two spaces, um, then it attacks each investigator that shared a space with it during the movement. One, two. Block war. No investigator. Each investigator must resolve a horror check against the monster within range with the highest rating. Um, one, two, three, one, two. So those two will have to deal with it, and we'll say it's horror check. You're suddenly caught up in the chanting and shouting. You begin to lose your sense of self among the din and clamor. So test willpower. Uh, so we're going with Marie first. Roll three. Um, she's going to use her Righteous to make that a three for She's good. If you fail... Yep, she's good. And then the next one is him who rolls three. One, two, we pass. We're good. Okay. Um, ama, 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 ama. One, two, get to the phone. Call the cops. Call the cops. Call the cops. Call police. You ask the operator for, uh, for the police, and she patches you through. You explain the situation to the officer on duty. The officer tells you help is on the way to get the safety. Cool. And then I also get the theorem, finally. Um, this alley twists and turns away from the street. It is littered with trash and smells of rotting food. Place the alley token as in Stewart. Sewer. Now, last card. And I said I need to go just to the back cards and just that be my life. Uh, a nondescript door leads into the buildings uh, abutting the alley. Come on, will they not? It's it's them. It's if it's not her. It's the sister. So that was move done. She's done. Um, you need to get people out, so first, get her to stay. Okay. Then second, here. You. One. Two. One. If we can survive, we can get them all out next turn. And you're all done. Give me one more round, please! The gangster grabs Anna and uses her as a human shield. An opposing gang member does not hesitate to gun both of them down. Each investigator suffers one horror. Dang it! Um, one horror. 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 Right, I gotta flip it face up. And horror. So yours, minor shock. Yours, mediocrity. Keep face up. You cannot improve any skills. Yours, Hysteria, flip one damage face up, then flip this card face down. Exhaustion, when you gain a condition, discard one clue. In the barrage of gunfire, a member of the Obanon gang, and you died. A member of the Obanon gang is winged in the arm by a bullet. The Obanon gang suffers one damage. The Obanon gang. Okay. 
A gangster from the Sheldon gang decides you are a threat and comes after you. Spawn a hired gun in the Sheldon gang. In the, uh... Spawn a hired gun in the Sheldon gang space. Sheldon gang moves two spaces towards the other gang, then it attacks each investigator shared a space. No investigator. The abandoned gang moves two spaces. Uh, no one in that space. The hired gun moves two spaces towards the nearest investigator, then it attacks the investigator in the space who has suffered the most damage. That would be Marie. Uh, you are caught off guard when, you're, when the brute appears behind you and wraps two massive arms around you in a crushing bear hug. Test strength. Her strength is three. If you pass, uh, one, and I'll use righteous. Two. Actually, I have to use this. Two. Um. So you no, I use righteous. I use righteous last last round for this. So she's fine. If you pass, you force your way out from under one of the uh, goons' arms. Each investigator must resolve horror. Everybody's doing this. Um, these two are the gangs. Go with the second. Uh, several members of the mob stare blankly into space for a moment before rejoining the ruckus. Suffer three face down horror, willpower minus one negate. Uh, within range, it's all three of them are the terrible ones. So, if you suffer two or more horror, you feel compelled to join them yourself in one space towards them. Crap. Uh, one, two, actually, no, I'm going to use the focus, um, so that's two. Uh, I suffer one face down horror, uh, one face down horror. So that's one, two, three, four, five, one more and I go crazy. You. I'll use. This, I'll use Righteous since it's about to vanish. And I'm going to suffer two face down horror. Got three on me. Um, you, four minus one, three. Uh, one, two, a three, no damage. And you're supposed to move one. Forward. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so first up, let's get the kid out. Get out of here. Okay. Second up, um, I'm going to throw the dynamite at the O'Bannon gang. Light the fuse and toss it. Uh, flip this card and place it in space within range. The fuse is only so long, it would be wise to run. At the end of the investigation phase, each investigator in this space or an adjacent space suffers 8 damage, and each monster in this space suffers 10 damage. So that ends your turn. You're not adjacent, so you're good. Uh, so that's you. You are going to move... Uh, you may die, so let's move here, which is not adjacent, and you are going to, sh to shrivel that guy, attack spell, which is free, then I'm going to attack again. So let's say, let's play it this way, I will attack with spell for lore, uh, lore is four. Are you kidding? I, I can't get the spell to work to save my life. Um, fail, you realize it's too dark, flip it over. You feel for a moment as the strange boils and lesions have taken hold within you. You suffer one face down horror. Discard this card and get another stupid scribbling spell because I can't seem to roll properly to kill anything. Let's try it again. Ah. Five dice to roll blanks on. 
Are you kidding me? One, two, three, four, five. Are you kidding me? And I'll move. One, two. Wow. Wow. Whatever. All right, you. Let's get this lady out of here and then move. It's safety. And you're going to move. Is the shop still open? Yep. Uh, one, two into the shop. And that will end your turn. It says, at the end of the investigator phase, each investigator in the space or an adjacent space suffer eight damage. Each monster in the space suffers ten. Okay, and then discard the card. The gangster takes cover near the gazebo. Enemy gangsters surround him from both sides and open fire. Fortunately, you have already rescued the old man who had been huddled here. In the barrage of gunfire, a member of the Sheldon gang is winged in the arm by a bolt. The Sheldon gang suffers one damage. A gangster from the Obanion decides you are a threat. Hired gun. Sheldon gang moves two spaces towards the nearest person within range. Then it attacks each investigator. Uh... The gang, uh... the gang rushes with the fine cover and they do not care who is already there. Strike two. Shall I roll all blanks again for you? Hey, look, I passed. If you pass, you fight them off and take your safe spot. Suffer one face down damage. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And that other one is six, which is injured. Wounded. I'm wounded and crazy. Uh, I passed, so. The Obanion moves two spaces towards the bandstand. Uh, then makes each investigator move one, two, three. Uh, the attack, the gang rushes towards the gazebo for cover, barreling through you. You struggle to avoid being trampled, so for three strength, which is three minus one, so I'm only rolling two. And I'll spend one to kind of lessen that pain. Um, so two face down damage coming to him. I already did this. Oh, they would have run here. Sorry, not him. Not him. They would have run here. They would have did one, two here. You would have attacked her. Now your turn few spaces which would have put you here. I screwed that up, but I got it right. Uh, dex plus one, so four. Uh, one, two, no damage. And then I already dealt with this. I already dealt with, deal with this. She took damage. I just did that wrong. Uh, all of it is the gang. The gang is doing this stuff. They're higher up. Uh, then suffer one face down heart. Place fire in the monster space. The riot begins shouting. The riot begins shouting and breaking things at random in the area. The sound of shattering glass and shouting is joined by a cackle and roar of flame. Place a fire in the monster space. There. Then suffer one face down horror. Will power stone. Will two dice. Just to look for one success. Got it for you. You. Got it. For you. Oh, you're supposed to only roll two. Got it. And then for you, you roll three. Got it. We're good. Jeez. 
It's getting crazy. It's getting crazy. Okay, first let's rescue this lady. Okay, so you're not here to help me. Gotcha. Um, I'm going to move here. And I'm going to do one, two, and I'm going to shoot that gang member. Fire. That's four. When things go bad, uh, we'll let Finn go. Uh, Finn will fire the thirty-eight revolver. Same guy. Finn rolls three. One, two. That's. You pass the number of shots striker for the monster stuffer's damage equal to the weapon's damage, which is three. Then he'll shoot again. One! Sweet! One! One! Her turn, she is going to attack the other gang member for her free spell, because why the hell not? Attack with the spell. Lore. Four. I am rolling terribly, so I pass. You pass out the lightning spring through your hand and jagged arcs. The monster and another monster within range each suffer damage equal to the spell's damage. You and another monster within range. You're within range. <laughs> so um, I'm going to hit. So both of you get hit. So I'm going to let you get hit with three. Um, you get hit with three. One, two, three. And you get. And you get hit. You're gone. I feel like getting that guy attacked. You get get hit with three. That was my free spell, actually. But this. Uh the spell works exactly as you wanted to. No additional effect. The next scribbling, which I'm going to use, actually. Yeah, I'm gonna use that. Let's attack you again. Well. Oh. Or one, two, got it. If you use pass, you pull your hands apart and a cord of crackling energy reaches out and steering your foes. Any number of monsters within range suffer damage equal to the spell's damage uh, divided as you choose. Okay, so it's three, so you'll take two. And you will take one. Then I flip this. Your enemy's flesh ripples and peels open. The monster suffers one additional damage and su uh, then suffer one face down horror. Uh, I'm going to pass those saving to you. And then I suffer one down horror. So I've got two, four, five of it. And then you got one more action because it was free action, action. If she's going down, she's going down swinging. So she's going to do the shriveling again. Uh, three. Nope. <laughs> if you fail, your mind reels. Let's see what happens to me. Uh, the spell seems to resonate and echo within your mind. You direct the resonance of another. Suffer one face down horror. Then another monster within range suffers three damage. And I reshuffle the shriveling. I'm going to die. That's for sure. But I'm going to take somebody with me. <laughs> All right. All right, so that ends her turn. You failed. You failed. You failed. All right, uh, the fire spreads out of control. Place fire in a space, in a space adjacent to a space containing fire. Go on over here. 
Someone throws a grenade that lands near where the woman would have been feeding ducks by the pond. The grenade explodes, sending shrapnel in all directions. Each investigator and monster in Park Pond and Street One suffers three damage. Decks and the gates. Oh no! Uh, one, one, two. Uh, so I only get one damage. Uh, this figure, keep face up, roll one fewer die while resolving an influence check. Okay, so this is the first gang. One member of the Sheldon gang tries pulling a wounded comrade to safety, but an opposing gang member guns them down. Sheldon gang suffers three. One, two, three. Okay. Sheldon gang moves two spaces to be in an outdoor space with as many investigators as possible, then attacks each investigators in the space. We'll go here. Attack. Uh, the gang rushes in your direction, looking for human shields. Dex. Your dex is three. You got two successes we did. If you pass, fight them off. Suffer one face down damage. Okay. The Obanian gang moves two spaces away from the other gang. Then it attacks the investigator in range with the nearest gang. Wait, the investigator runs two spaces away from the other gang, then it attacks the investigator in, in range nearest to the other gang. One, two, so it's going to shoot him again. Yelling at his uh, compadres to get clear, one of the gangsters pulls out a bottle with an oil damp rag stuck in his mouth. The gangster lights it up with a torch and throws it at the enemy gang, but it sails off target towards you. Oh no! Um, so, Dex 3. No! If you fail, the bottle bursts at your feet and the smell of burning kerosene spreads around you. Place fire in your space, then you and each other investigator in your space suffers two face down damage. Oh no! <laughs> so, how much damage can I take? One, two, three, four, five, six. I got the wrong. It was the sister. It was the sister, not the cop. Dang it. Each investigator must resolve a horror check. Let's do it. Uh, you're suddenly caught up in the chanting and shouting, so you begin to lose sense of yourself from the din and clamor. So we roll three, fail. Uh, you lose yourself and suffer one horror and become dazed. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is enough. Make us go insane, and we are dazed. the wrong person but i know it's the sister I, I i knew it was the sister i stopped thinking it was the sister because i went to the house stinking sister i can't spend clues to do stuff. um shoot sorry they need to do that for two got it you need to do that for four to get two you failed um you would suffer based on damage and become date Gum blast it. <laughs> How much do I have? It'd be two. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. One horror. One horror and become days, not damage. Horror. And damage. Oh boy! The police arrive on the scene. The investigation is complete. Oh! It was the sister. The sound of sirens and screeching wheels grows rapidly louder as the police approach, scattering the gang members in all directions. The violence subsides, but not before many lives were lost. You turn the evidence you collected over to the police, only to learn the culprit has disappeared without a trace. With no one but each other to blame for the killings, tensions between the gangs continue to rise. Though your efforts ended a battle, you fear a war has just begun. Ugh.
Oh my gosh. All right, so it wasn't the cop, it was the sister. Alice and uh, uh, Alice and the cop were were a couple. They were a couple. Whew, they were a couple. Alice died in the crossfire. The sister got was was angry about it and wanted to seek revenge. When I got to the house, it switched for me from the sister. Uh, <laughs> well, I won. It, it, but it switched from the house for me from the sister to um to Alice because the broken mirror, the dog, all this other stuff is like she she did that. But it was the sister who was seeking revenge on the cop, and I should have spoken up for the cop, which would have let me know it was the sister. I know it's the sister, but this was really fun. <laughs> yeah, this was really fun. I I think this was this was a lot of fun. Um. When you replay the scenario, if you're like, well, this spoiled it, it doesn't. You're going to get a completely different set of stuff that happened. A completely different suspect. It's just, I messed up. It should have been the sister. Ugh. But I lived. I, I, I won't call the win, <laughs> but, I, but I lived. So that is uh, Matches of Madness. We played Gangs of Arkham. So if you replay it, you'll get a different scenario, different setup, everything. So really, I didn't spoil you. You didn't see anything that wasn't spoiled. It won't be the sister again. It'll probably be somebody else for your uh, for your scenarios. This game is really great at mixing that stuff up. So, um, yeah, Ooh, that was a ride. <laughs> that was a ride. So uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Uh, so what's coming next week? Uh, pay attention to the one of the other channels i'm i'm still getting the information together so that's why i feel kind of kind of odd about making an announcement of it but i'm supposed to be playing a game with um steve from one shop from one stop co-op shop and that may be tomorrow so keep an eye on that channel tomorrow 9 p.m eastern and i may show up on there uh, i i want to make sure that we got all the logistics work out, so I can show up on there because I want to play. Uh, but we'll see. But that's what's coming Monday. Tuesday won't be a stream because Monday I'll be doing that. Thursday we'll be getting back into uh, some, some gameplay with, um, with Pac-Man and Steven. So we'll be going through that. And Sunday, I'm actually going to play a different game. I'm deciding between two. It's either going to be Star Scrapers or... Where's that, or where's that other game? Or exploring. That's what it is. It's going to be one of those two. I haven't determined yet. It's going to be either Star Scrapers or Explore It. <laughs> Way past my bet. I know. I'm sorry, Cynthia. It, it was when they were free to play. It wasn't my choosing. It wasn't my choosing. I said I said six my usual time, which would still be eleven your time, which is which is way past your time. So, um, but also, um. I'm going to see what Cynthia, Kate, and I are going to see if uh, Rob from Rob's Gaming Table is interested in playing another multiplayer with us um, on his channel for Gloomhaven Digital. If not, um, then we'll be playing that at some point. But I need to check with them and make sure it's all good. It pro I, I don't know if it'll be a stream because it was kind of us just kind of hanging out and doing things. But if they feel comfortable with it, we'll see. I'll talk to them and see what that looks like. Otherwise, it'll just be us playing. But, oh, that was, that was exhausting. I'm tired. So <laughs> I'm going to uh, step back and enjoy the rest of my Sunday. So I hope you all enjoyed the, the playthrough. If you like it, hit, hit the like, hit the subscribe button to join up to see when new streams are coming. Um, thank you to my Patreons. I appreciate you so much. Thank you to my YouTube subscribers. I need a day off so I can do the 600 sub stream of playing Dungeon Crusade because it is an all day affair. And we will try to get that stuff going through. Um, as soon as I get a day off, that's when it'll be scheduled. I promised you that. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, yeah. So that's all I really got. <laughs> My brain is mush. I hope you've enjoyed this playthrough. Um, if, if I made a comment, if I made a mistake, which I probably did during the gang fire stuff, um, put it down in the description, I mean, the comments below. I'm sure I did because I got screwed up with what was the gang and what was the hired gun. I thought I sorted it out, but I probably missed like two attacks that may have killed one of my investigators. But either way, we survived. 
So that's how it goes. But thank you so much for all joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, and I will see you all next time, possibly Monday. So keep an eye on the One Stop Call Shop for that stuff, and we'll see how it plays out. Thank you so much, everybody. I will see you all next time. Have a good Sunday. Insert comment here. See you later.